CEDAW, the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, is a core international human rights instrument which was adopted by the United Nations in 1979. As of July 2020, 189 states have ratified the CEDAW, making it one of the most ratified human rights treaties. By becoming a state party to the CEDAW, a state commits itself to take all appropriate measures, including introducing legislation and temporary special measures so that women can enjoy all their human rights. The CEDAW has three foundational principles, substantive equality, non-discrimination and state obligation. Let's start with the first one, substantive equality. In many countries, women continue to live in a society where men wield the primary power and occupy roles of political leadership, moral authority and social privilege. Women occupy a considerably disadvantageous position in comparison to men. Substantive equality recognizes these unequal positions and seeks to address them by ensuring equality of results. For example, making primary education free for all children may not, on its own, result in gender equal results in a society where education for girls is discouraged or considered unimportant. States should implement additional measures, such as incentives for families to send their daughters to school and making sure that girls can safely and easily attend schools. These measures should also include eliminating societal beliefs that underpin obstacles to girls' access to education. States are obligated, under the CEDAW, to develop a corrective approach by looking at how and why men and women are treated differently and implement measures to address this. Now let's move on to non-discrimination. Gender-based discrimination can be both direct and indirect. Laws and policies that directly discriminate against women in relation to marriage, citizenship, property ownership, inheritance and work still exist in many countries. Indirect discrimination occurs when laws and policies that appear to be applicable to both men and women turn out to be discriminatory because of culture, tradition, religious practices and or other measures that claim to protect women but actually end up being an obstacle to women. For example, there is indirect discrimination if a policy at work requires that in order to be promoted as manager, one has to take on night shifts. This policy indirectly discriminates against women who, more often than not, have responsibilities as primary caregivers of young children after standard working hours. The state is obliged to identify, prohibit, provide redress and prevent all forms of discrimination against women both on paper and in practice. Finally, let's address state obligation. States are required to take positive measures to accelerate gender equality through the promotion of women's rights. The CEDAW calls for the implementation of temporary special measures which would give provisional advantages to women while the environment is being corrected. States may, for instance, set special quotas for women in decision-making positions such as the legislature, judiciary and executive branches of the government. State parties to the CEDAW must undertake all necessary measures to protect women's rights to create a world that is equal for all.